Now, I'm in love with what Nintendo is doing with the awesome, awesome Switch console. It's kind of making me a little sad because I do play this game on my console, on the Xbox. Mm -hmm. and, on the uh, Xbox. On the Xbox. On the Xbox. <laughs> and, um, I'll just keep saying on the Xbox. I really want these skins for my vehicle. I know. They're awesome. Rocket League on Nintendo Switch getting exclusive battle cards. Rocket League is coming to Nintendo Switch this year, and when it does, players can get their hands on free exclusive battle cards designed after Mario, Luigi, and Samus. The system is along is also getting exclusive customization items such as themed hats and rocket boots. Developer Psionic says more information about the game on the system coming before launch. Like, the Metroid one just looks, I mean, freaking amazing. Did you see the Metroid one? No, I didn't see that one. That's what it looks like. Oh, that does look really uh, cool. It has those neon, like, glowing tires. Freaking amazing. I'm, okay. We should have, definitely next time we will be doing more, uh, there we go. There you hey, go. Delicious. Yeah, you know. Super official here at the hey, Nerd you know, Cave, you know. You know. <laughs> uh, we are getting it for free today. <laughs> They're getting it free on the live stream. But you could go over to patreon.com slash nerdcave and toss us a few dollars over there and Help get us all, out. all the stuff for early. For all early. The, for early. Not for, for free, early. but for early. <laughs> for early. Um and speaking of Rocket League and Patreon, we've hit ten subscribers over on Patreon, which means bum ba da dum, we're gonna be having community game nights every month now. And our community game night this month is this coming up Thursday, August 31st at 8 o'clock p.m. And we're going to be playing Rocket League. I am so much better than the first day that I've played Rocket League on the Nerd Cave because it was it was horrible. But now that, you know, me, Luke, Jake, and Willis, we play often. I suck. I've got, I'm so much better. Like, I can actually do flips and knock mm. the ball in and stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm awful. I'm so how are we going to do this? Are we going because there's only four people who can play together? At a time. Um, what I'm thinking is doing like a, on the Discord server, trying to get that to work uh, this time and have it where like Xbox people, PlayStation people, because I'm assuming you're going to play on Xbox. Yeah, I'm gonna play on PlayStation. Um, we can have even one for PC if people PC people want to do that and everything. And I'll uh, I'll put the link to our Discord server. Discord server, <laughs> so everybody can start joining in there, and we can get have some fun. I'm lo really looking forward to it. Um, it kind of went up as a vote on the Nerd Cave group page, uh, and everybody seemed to really want to play Rocket League. So hey, we're gonna do it. It's gonna be fun. Battlefield would also be a good one because you can have a ton of people play that mm -hmm. one at one time. Don't know if everybody has it though. I want to play some PUBG sometime soon when it comes out. Or is it out? Huh? It's not out yet, no. It's on PC. Wow. Oh. Over over what? Over there at WB, new Injustice 2 characters revealed with Fighter Pack 2. NetherRealm Studios announced the next batch of Injustice 2 characters, which feature as part of the Fighter Pack 2. Mortal Kombat's Raiden, comic book hero, Hellboy, and supervillain Black Manta are the latest addition to the Fighting Games cast and will be able will be made available for download over the next few months. The first Fighter Pack included Red Hood, Starfire, and Sub-Zero, although Black Manta and Raiden have been hinted as being on the card for a while now. Keep out, keep an eye out on NetherRealm's Twitch channel this week in where the developers offering a gamer's first look at Black Manta. Black Manta looks freaking cool. He does, but I am way more excited for Hellboy. Help! I was surprised. I, by Hellboy. That, that that caught me by surprise when I saw it go up. I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, uh, this, he looks good too. Yeah, I, it's not a crappy looking Hellboy. I mean, he looks just like the comic. Exactly. Uh, I'm excited to see what his. Uh, like super is because I haven't watched the video, mm -hmm. but like what his super is, like what all his abilities are. I'm sure he's gonna get big baby out and shoot. Some oh people. yeah, that would be. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I haven't played in Justin in quite some time, but it is a game that I really really liked. Um, one game that looked interesting back in at E3 2015, Fay or Fee. FIFO and FUM. Fee is coming to Nintendo Switch and other platforms early 2018. Fee, originally showed at E3 2015, has re-emerged on EA stage at Gamescom with a new trailer and a new platform, Nintendo Switch. I'm glad to see a third party supporting yep. the Nintendo Switch and EA doing that. And I know EA 
was like, hey, we're we're seeing if FIFA is going to sell. Uh, this being a smaller game, it's a little bit easier to uh, get people into oh, it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and not having to worry about you know packaging and doing all of that. The new trailer offers some more information about the game's plot and gameplay and licenses a familiar a monster and men song. The game's protagonist can communicate with other creatures in its world to work with them and rid darkness from its home. The game is coming to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC early 2018. The game looks great. It's going it to be, it's gonna be at really the, fun. Because I remember watching uh, some of the, le- not last play, but the trailer for it. It has interesting, you mm. know, ideas behind it. It's. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily Ori in the Blind Forest type deal, but it has that kind of artistic style to yeah. it. Uh, very neon. Very, very neon. But yeah. it looks very cool. Um, now, this next story excites me. Oh, yeah. It excites me like Excite Bike back on the old... Uh, oh, we're going. Old NES. We're going back. Oh, yeah. Back, right. back, back, back. Back it up. First details for Star Wars Battlefront 2 Space Combat has been revealed. Have you seen the trailer? I have. And it, some of the stuff that we're able to do makes me so excited because Battle, you know, Battlefront Front, yeah. 2 was, I'm talking about like the, the original, original. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, PlayStation 2 version. Not, not to be confused with Battlefront 2, <laughs> yeah. the new one. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Space Battles was my favorite part. Mm-hmm. And now the beauty of what we're seeing with the new oh space God. battles. Oh my Jesus. It's beautiful. Oh yeah, it is. Um, Electronics Arts Gamescom press press briefing kicked off today with a lengthy look at Star Wars Battlefront 2's new starter, Starfighter Assault Mode. As the name implies, this mode is dedicated to space combat, but unlike the first Battlefront game, the scope isn't limited to X-Wing dogfights against tar, tar, fighter, tar, fighter. Tar, fighter, tar fighter, TIE Fighters. Starfighter Assault matches the un- unfold in three parts, beginning with the Rebel Alliance needing to take down the Imperial cruiser that are protecting a space station. Specific parts of the cruisers need to be destroyed to knock them out of the battle. Players on the per- Imperial side must protect them as best as they can. If the Rebels succeed, they must tunnel into the base to take out the shield protectors. Y-Wings and A-Wings race in words of the space station, which offers little room for maneuvering. When the shield protectors are destroyed, the rebel moves onto the final phase of the fight, disabling the power couplings to reveal the space station's core. In this particular demo, the rebels succeeded largely thanks to the hero ships that enter the battle. We saw Poe Dameron's Black Black One X-Wing fighter provide plenty of cover fire against the TIE fighters and TIE bombers, and the Millennium Falcon draw the fire of Darth Maul's skimmager which can cloak and Boba Fett slave one. Mm. When the core is exposed, one shot ends the fight, a moment captured with explosions and death, uh, star destroyers scrambling helplessly into space. Um, I like it. I, I am excited to finally get back into space. I loved the, the, the the dog fighting, the flight mode of battlefront one was my favorite part of the game. That's the one. Anytime we would have community game nights back in the day, or what do we call them uh, back then? Play dates. Play dates. <laughs> when we were all children. When we were all children, play dates. Um, we, that's one that we went to, we gravitated to a lot because it was so much fun. It was easy to get in. It was easy to get kills. Um, but the better you got, the more fun it was. Oh, so yeah. I'm really looking forward to this. I hope that is not the only game mode that they're going to be using uh, in this. But we will see. I'm excited for the game. It looks amazing. Um, we're only having to wait a little bit longer for this, so it's one that is definitely on my list to play. This oh, year. yeah. Um, now, Derek Daniel sent us all of these, and he was like, you need to take this one off. He's like, you don't need to talk about it. I was like, why not? I'm going to talk about it. He, he wanted me to replace it. And I was like, I think they need to know. Even if they do know, I think we still need to talk about it. A Gamescom 2017 Blizzard showcased a new escort map. Junker Town. Yes. <laughs> former home to the colorful duo of Roadhog and Junkrat, the escort map is a picture of a post-apocalyptic Mac- Mad Max yes. Mad Max S <laughs> paradise for players to brawl in. Will you be able to move the payload of bombs and cash through the city? Will you? Oh, oh, yes. I'm sure. I, I certainly will. Oh, yeah. I'll be 
carrying my team with my heels. <laughs> See, if only we had it for the same system, it would make life so much easier. Yeah, what do you have it on? Xbox One. Oh, okay. That's the one I don't have it on, because I have it on PC I and PS4. I thought you had it on PlayStation 4, didn't John? I do! Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I did hear about this uh, earlier this week is that there was a few signs in Junkertown that um, wasn't colloquialized yeah, into there was Australia. A, um, it was like it was uh, like what we would what we would call takeout. Uh, they call takeaway. Mm -hmm. So they Blizzard was like, "Oh, I'm sorry, we did that." I'm like, "It's just a sign." <laughs> It's just a sign, but it's also nice to see that, oh, that they, they want to keep it yeah, correct. Like, no, I appreciate that. Yeah. But I'm just like, don't give them that much, like, you know. Grief crap. over it. Yeah, but I, like, I thought it was nice that they're actually caring about it, um, yeah. which was really cool. And um, I don't know if you saw the short that came with it. Yes. It was. Uh, I didn't see that short. I watched the May short. Oh, my God. I, I cried. I cried during that one. <laughs> so sad. Um, but no, I have the no junkers... attachments to any of them. So. Well, it, the little robot gave his like, life. I mean, she recharged him, but I, he was like. I still oh. haven't watched it. I mean, like I you like you know it. what happens because it's just, it's just May's backstory. But actually seeing it was it was sad. Um, but you know the Junker Town one is really funny because it's uh, Roadhog and Junkrat. They get kicked out, and so they're trying to get back in. And so Junkrat's like, "Oh, I have this great idea," and like the the short really it. Uh, cements the idea mm -hmm. that um junk rats super stupid like it's like he comes up with all these ideas but he's actually like really dumb and then roadhog's just like i hate this guy so much <laughs> like, like, like they're friends but you know yeah like he's so stupid it's just it, it's really it's really funny and it's, it's pretty short it's only a few minutes long i think um yeah i haven't watched him but it, it, it's really fun it's really fun now What's very interesting is what Guerrilla Games is doing with Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, if you haven't played it, you're missing out on an amazing game. I haven't finished it, but I've played it. It is fantastic. I want to play it. At 30 minutes. Ooh, amazing. Amazing, man. <laughs> it's, more than, it's more than I have. It, it's, it's made you feel whole inside, right? It has. Horizon Zero Dawn is, and this might be for you. Okay. No, this might it's not. I this like, might be I like harder you, difficulty This stuff. might be you because you can't dedicate enough time for it. I can. Apparently not. Thirty minutes, man. No, At least right. I have like five hours into the game. You're right. Horizon Zero Dawn is introducing easier difficulty for story focused players. Guerrilla Games has announced as a part of its 1.32 update that Horizon Zero Dawn it is an, introducing an easy difficult for players who want to just experience the story. The mode comes on the hills of the 1.30 update, which added the ultra hard setting. The new difficulty setting appropriately called story is meant to let players experience Aloy's tale and explore the open world without fear of difficult battles. Selecting story difficult buffs the player's damage while reducing the damage Aloy takes, making encounters much easier. Um, so I think this is a good way to get younger players into the story yeah um spe or people that don't have a lot of time to dedicate to it because it is a very long game in my opinion um i haven't beat it yet um but getting to experience the story experience the world without having to worry about the beast or the machines and all of that is a huge deal like oh yeah the t-rex is freaking hard to kill like they're just the the bigger they are the harder they are and it takes about 30 minutes like at what level I'm at right now to be able to beat them. Um, so, you know, a lot of people don't have that time to sink in. Oh, I know yeah. I definitely don't at this point in time, but them allowing this is really nice in my opinion. Any other thoughts on it? With me not being able to play as much as I want to, um, I don't have a lot to say. It is beautiful. The first little bit I'm exploring the cave, I'm still a child. So, um, I'm waiting to get out Man, of Man, you're like, wait. <laughs> Ooh. Now, one thing that's not clear, and it has not been clear since E3 this year, Xbox One exclusivity, exclusivity for Player Unknown's Battleground called into question. Microsoft announced this week that they would be the publisher for Player Unknown's Battleground, the mega popular PC Battle Royale shooter, which arrives on Xbox One later this year. By the way... PUBG has sold over 8 million copies so far. 8 million copies. That's crazy. Um, 
arrive on Xbox later this year. However, the wording seemed confusing to many, and players looking for clarification for developer Blue Hole on Twitter were met with some muddy wording. And this is uh, coming from Destin Ligari from IGN. Um, he says, I was, and he's tweeting at the people, I was not clear on PUBG announcement. They were always publishing it on Xbox. Did they confirm it's 100% exclusive? And this is Sammy from PUBG and Gamescom, probably one of them, uh, one of their PR people. We have expanded the partnership and we'll be working more closely with Xbox team to launch on console faster and we'll get more support. Destin replies, hmm. to clarify the phrasing, does that mean it will be published exclusively on PC and Xbox, but not any other console with MS as the publisher? Yes, this sponsorship is about allowing our dev team to solely focus on Xbox and PC development and bring PUBG to Xbox players faster. And then Tall Dave <laughs> says, still not really answered the question, though. And then Sammy replies, we have nothing further to announce at this time. We'll be working hard to bring PUBG to Xbox sooner. <laughs> uh, and we saw this this kind of muddled response when uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider was coming out for Xbox One, there was not a really definite until it almost came out and was like, oh, By Xbox is, is getting six months of exclusivity on it. Um, I think what it's going to boil down to is we're getting um, we're getting this, but it Microsoft is publishing it just for themselves. If there's going to be another publisher that's going to put it out for anything else, it is going to be somebody other than Microsoft. Yeah. So that's my my take on that. Uh, I really want PUBG on PlayStation. I think it will come uh, specifically because PlayStation has over 60 million units sold. It'd be smart. Xbox, I think they're around the last time, and I haven't seen numbers because they don't put out numbers that often. I think they're Allie, around 25, maybe 30 at this point in time. Um, and that's not including the Xbox One I X. Say, we're gonna, uh, we'll and we'll get, get to that here in just a little bit. But I want this on PlayStation. It would be insane for them not to do it. Uh, no, that's Xbox 360. I was like, that can't be right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while she looks that up, we'll continue on. Bioshock is mm. getting 10th Anniversary Collector's Edition. To celebrate the 10th anniversary of a game that some consider one of the greatest of all time, 2K is stealing your money once again yes, and has announced a special U.S. only Bioshock 10th anniversary collector's edition for PS4 and Xbox One. The limited edition package features Bioshock the collection as well as a nice looking Big Daddy slash Little Sister statue from for a $200. The collector's edition is exclusive to GameStop and 2K Store. Uh, full disclosure, Game Informer is owned by GameStop. And pre-orders have begun. It releases on November 14th. Uh, this sort of even, the, the cover here looks a lot like the cover for Bioshock or something that would come yeah. straight from that. Uh, it looks really nice. As long as it it looks like that, it would be worth it in my opinion. And the collection has Bioshock, Bioshock 2, and Bioshock Infinite in it. So you're getting three games and you're getting this cool looking statue. But is it worth $200? Not to me. Because the game right now is $30. Yeah. Is you talking about the collection? Yeah. Yeah, and the statue, you would, you would have to justify that. Like if you're a huge Bioshock fan, uh, Gadiel... I think this would be right up his alley. Like I love this. I love these games. I think they're amazing, but I still wouldn't go and spend, you know, a hundred and what hundred and why can I do math? One hundred and seventy dollars on yeah. a statue. I wouldn't either. And that that's where I'm. I'm kind of uh, with me. It kind of doesn't set well, but you know, it, to each his own. I've got yeah. some of those over there. I bought. Um, night vision goggles for a lot more than they're ever worth and you know one day i'll make another sandwich with them um jurassic world evolution has been announced for xbox one in a new trailer just announced at microsoft's GameComs pre-show jurassic world evolution appears to be a park management style game for players to create their own jurassic park Details are scant as the trailer simply played and was not expounded upon beyond what the footage was. The trailer lists the game as coming in summer 2018. Uh, if you want to check out the trailer, you can go look it up. And I know you are 
What good timing? I know, I know. <laughs> perfect time, perfect time. I called him out too. I was like, that's perfect for him. Um, I know you play sort of a Jurassic Park um, it was manager. A yeah, yeah. It's, it's what it was. Uh, of course, it's just Jurassic World. It was a game you you kind of created your own park yeah. and you got to like crossbreed and make hybrids. Yeah. Uh, this game is, sounds similar to that, but it's going to be on the Xbox, and, and I think it's going to have a lot more yeah. that you can do. Yeah. Because with this one, you can go battle other people's dinosaurs and stuff like that. So it's like cockfighting? Pretty much. Hmm. With dinosaurs. Interesting. No data? No, no, no. Uh, it's because people are weird. It took a little bit. Um, as of May, they sold uh, about 30 million units. <laughs> Yeah, they're not wanting to talk about it <laughs> as long as PlayStation's whooping the hiney. But yeah. thirty million million's not bad. No, much better than the Wii U. <laughs> yeah, the Wii U as of May twenty uh, thirteen point five or something like that. Uh, that's what it said last time. On this thing, it's saying the Wii U is thirteen point nine three million units, but hmm. whatever. Yeah, whatever. Didn't know. sell well. Nope. Um, this is interesting. It'll be. I know a lot of people have. You know, they play like Zoo Tycoon or Roller Coaster Tycoon or Sim City, or all of these things. Fallout Shelter. Fallout Shelter. This would be, this is perfect for those the the type of gamer that likes to just invest and like build something up. Uh, so I think it's a really cool announcement, and I can't wait to see what they do with it. More of it than just the little trailer that they show. Yeah. Uh, you know, people getting to send stuff out to you know youtubers or whatever to let them talk about it more or show yeah. more would be great um now if you didn't watch gamescom there was a ton of stuff being announced during that whole thing gamescom 2017 xbox one s minecraft and middle earth shadow of war bundles have been revealed middle earth and minecraft xbox one s bundles coming this year new minecraft and middle earth shadow of war xbox one bundles will be available this fall microsoft revealed during its gamescom press conference the shadow of war bundle will be available october 10th in either a terabyte or 500 gigabyte versions the bundle includes the system shadow of war additional in-game items the legendary champions war party and epic sword of dominion as well as the Xbox One controller, one month of Xbox Game Pass subscription, and a 14-day Xbox Live Gold trial. The one terabyte version will cost $349 and is available in all markets except for China and Japan, while the 500 gigabyte universe, uh, universe unit is available for $279. You, you, that's American money. Uh, in all, expect, uh, all Xbox markets except for the Save for the U.S., Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Chile, Argentina, China, and Japan. Wow, they do not want people to buy that 500 gig <laughs> thing. Uh, now, one that a lot of people, I think, will want is a limited edition Minecraft bundle is also coming for the Xbox One S in the form of a one terabyte custom grass block console. The bundle also features a limited edition creeper controller, Minecraft system sounds, a vertical stand, and a transparent underside featuring red stone circuit accents the minecraft bundle comes to, in stores on october 3rd and is a cr available currently for pre-order um <clears throat> i'm not um i'm not a minecraft fan but the minecraft the minecraft one looks cool that and sounds i'm really cool yeah and i'm not even a i'm like i said like you just said we're not minecraft fans <laughs> no so, look at this alley does, does this look cool to you Oh, that does look really cool. Yeah, so That's, there you go. It. Sorry, people. You probably couldn't see that because it's green. <laughs> but if you're going to buy this console, the uh, the S, I mean, splurge for the one terabyte. Just let me tell you. Yeah, well, right and now. if you're in the U.S., you're not going to get one that's under a terabyte. Um, and news, the Xbox One, the original, is no longer being produced. It's done. The Damn. Xbox One S is now the... Which, the the I, bottom I mean, line. I'm, that's not Which makes issue. sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Because um, it's right there. It's going to be pretty much the same price as mm -hmm. what your um, the other console yeah. is. Um, but I'm I'm saving up um, right now. I'm probably this is probably be a uh, January February purchase. But the Xbox One X because God, am I tired of having to delete games to play other games? And they're games that I want to play, but I'm like. You know, I have the, the scales out. I'm like, okay, this is what I want to play from this game. Well, 
I, I like this game, and we're going to live stream this game. You so, know, all you got to do is get an external hard drive. That'll fix it. That's a lot cheaper than getting the Unless you Xbox trade in your X. system and you get a lot of it off. Mm-hmm. Speaking saying, of the saying. Xbox One X, the Xbox One X breaks pre-order record for Microsoft. Microsoft's upcoming console appears to be off to a strong start as Xbox One X has set a new pre-order record for the company. According to a post on Xbox Wire, more Xbox One X Project Scorpio Edition consoles were pre-ordered in the first five days than any Xbox before. Microsoft said it saw record-breaking sellout times for the console, which is currently sold out in many countries. Uh, the speed at which we sold through our initial pre-order supply surpassed expectations, and what was we experienced with pre-orders for the original Xbox One console, GameStop Senior VP of Merchandise Bob Puzan. Uh, Microsoft plans to share details about the next wave of standard edition Xbox One X pre-orders next month. If you're still looking to reserve the console $499, um, reserve the $499 console ahead of its November 7 launch, head over and figure hetero out. Over, hetero, 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 hetero over, over there. Head on over uh. there to GameStop. <laughs> um, now, I'm glad that they made, like, Project Scorpio sounds way better than Xbox One X. Yeah, like Xbox One Scorpio. Like, that just sounds cool. Like, you get to, you get, to get down here and Scorpio. <laughs> like, Xbox One X. Like, everything's the X. X going to give it to you. But, X will give it to you, definitely. You know, but it's boring. It, uh, it it's is very boring. lackluster. Uh, all the build-up for it was really cool because they had the cool code name. Yeah. Here. Scorpio this. It's the Scorpio best, that. It's the best code name that's been around then for they, a while. They come out and they're like, X. <laughs> <laughs> um, my biggest thing is the Xbox One Project Scorpio edition looks like crap yeah uh it looks like crap and like on the controller the text is not even centered and i'm just like it's annoying so much it is so annoying like oh it may be annoying it is no it yeah, is I, annoying. i'm saying but i'm saying i'm still looking at getting this system because um you know i will inevitably one day have a 4K TV, mm-hmm. and I am tired of deleting games off of my 500 gigabyte Xbox One. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm sure that they'll fix that. They have to, right? What the the text? text? Like it's just the Project Scorpio version. Yeah. Like the regular regular Xbox One X doesn't have anything. I do like the gradient that they put on the yeah. the system, but other than slapping some green text on things, it doesn't look amazing by yeah, any of them. Oh, yeah, it's not huh? centered. It's not centered, and it is annoying. Move your head. Sorry. <laughs> it's not centered. It's it just is... ever so slightly too far to the right. That You know, <laughs> you deal too much with, like, making <laughs> graphics. <laughs> that's not centered. Why is it not no, centered? No, 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 like, that's, that, that is sad and, and inexcusable. Like, I, my uh, guess is that they had a... Because, um... Because the thing's not set up right now for me to show everybody. Uh, but, like, my guess is that the D pad indent mm-hmm. and uh, where the uh, right joystick indent were before they, like, smoothed out the indent yeah. on the right, they were probably about the same. So it'd be in the middle between those. But then also, if you look up and you, like, like do like a line up, it's also like it's not centered with the Xbox yeah. either. I think it so was annoying. the old man on the conveyor belt. Like, one came out, he like, yep, it look good. <laughs> Turn it all <laughs> through. They don't care. They don't play them fangled video games. Or my little brother Trevor worked at a Hitachi, and all he had to do was keep pressing a button for a conveyor belt. That Trevor was working for Microsoft. He's just like, yep, <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep. Not even looking at it. Yep. Uh, now we talked a lot about Xbox last week, um, and. Seeing that the pre-orders were very strong for this is a good indication. Mm-hmm. We talked a lot about, you know, Phil Spencer, you know, helming the ship in the right direction, closing a lot of games down that weren't in the good space. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna audible here. I think we have one of these. I say, don't here. worry, because my notes are completely jumbled up right now. Sorry, so I moved, matter. I moved the Xbox <laughs> one over. Um, we're gonna, we talked about Crackdown last week, uh, and holy crap. That's what I have pulled up. So I'm right, good. There you hey, go. Look at uh, and then 
this past weekend with Gamescom and everything, um, someone interviewed one of the Microsoft execs, and they said that Crackdown 3 was announced too early, says Microsoft exec. Uh, the reveal of Crackdown 3 at E3 2014 may not be may have been a bit premature. Sorry, Ooh, guys. Whoa. Ooh. Lord. According to a Microsoft Studios publishing general manager, Shannon Loftus. Speaking to Polygon and Gamescom 2017, Loftus admitted the company probably announced Crackdown too early. Hmm. It's 2014 when you announced it. It's 2017 now. It's been delayed to 2018. Probably announced it too early, but you know what else? Whatever. Uh, noting that the game features three different modes, is being developed by three different studios, and was delayed to spring 2018 so the teams could up the game's overall quality. Three studios are working on this game for three modes. What is going on? That three studios, not one, not two, like. You know, like, oh, this one's working on the story mode and this one's working on the multiplayer. No. There's three, three different- studios working on this one game. Shannon goes on to say, we definitely underestimated the challenge of making sure the quality bar of all three of those modes were high and it delivers on what needed to be delivered on. Lofta explained that nothing, noting it was super hard, a super hard decision that was made all more difficult in light of the fact that Crackdown 3 had already been announced several years prior. She acknowledged that Microsoft has previously made the mistake of announcing some exclusives a little bit too early, which is something they're trying to learn from, and such are remaining tight-lipped about on on other projects uh she goes on to say we're in this for the long haul and we want to make sure that it's not just for spring 2018 but in the summer and in the fall and the spring of 2019 that we'll have great unique fun experiences on the x for xbox gamers this doesn't teach you don't count your chickens before they hatch nothing will it's it's the tried and true we're trying to get people to buy stuff yeah. right now. We don't care about the future. We want them to buy stuff right now. Xbox 360 Crackdown was huge. So they're like, you know what? Xbox One Crackdown's coming very soon. I promise. Right around the corner. Yep, yep. Right, uh, right, right around the corner. 2015, it's still. It's right here. I promise you. It's coming. 2015, 2016. Where are we? Look at us. And what gets me, like we talked very in-depth about this, so I don't want to get too much in the weeds this week about it. It was supposed to be an Xbox One X launch title. Yeah. They have three studios working on three modes. And that's so dumb. That confuses me. That confuses me as well. And in, in this day and age, most games get shipped when they're not finished. Why not ship one mode that's done? Yeah. Like, ship that one. And then... Oh, this is DLC. You bought the game. This is DLC. Free DLC. <laughs> Do whatever everybody else is doing and get yeah. it out the freaking gate, man. Now, to quote one of my favorite movies, Talladega Nights, I'm a little bit confused by your tactics. <laughs> now, I will say this. I'm glad that they're trying to make the game the best that it can be. Yeah, totally. But Crackdown 3, I'm calling it right now, it will not break the 8 like, if they're scoring on an 8 scale, it will not break the 8. It'll be about a 7.0 game on any kind of being judged. It's going to be mediocre at best. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not a huge Crackdown fan, so, I mean, so it, I'm it's just It just befuddles way. me. Befuddles me why, they're, why we're wasting our time on that. Uh, we got a few more, guys, and then we're going to talk about one of our things. Right, we'll answer those questions in our AMA section, uh, guys. So just hold on a few more minutes. Former Valve writer posts possible Half-Life 2 Episode 3 plot summary. Former Valve writer Mark Laidlaw has posted a fictional letter on the site that sure reads like a possible plot summary of Half-Life 2 Episode 3. Laidlaw joined Valve in the 1990s and announced his departure from the company in January 2006. In that time, he worked on the story for Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2, and both in the latter game's episodic sequels. Um, So, I'm not going to read it, but it's interesting that somebody would leak story details to a game that's probably never going to get made. Mm, It happens. it's, It's interesting because... I think people have lost faith in Valve as a developer. 
Uh, I know I've definitely lost faith in Valve and curating Steam. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean. You know what I mean. Um, so I, I think, you know, if this guy's written it, it I, I'm sure he's going to get in some trouble because I'm sure he's signed some stuff that he's not supposed to talk about or oh, whatever. Yeah. Gabe Newell is going to like appear out of nowhere and he's going to slash his throat like he slashes prices on sale day oh. at Steam. Hey. So uh, if you want to read about that, definitely go check it out. I don't want to ruin it for anybody that is you know, holding their breath for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, what was very interesting is an old RPG, older than the promises of a new Half-Life. <laughs> Secret of Mana remake has been announced for PlayStation 4, Vita, and Steam. Square Enix is, Square Enix is remaking Secret of Mana. The beloved role-playing game will be released in North America on February 15, 2018. So right after, that would be a perfect gift for the gamer in your life. If they got a Vita or a PlayStation 4. Yeah. In August 1993, the game was originally released as Sinking Ding Sun Sun. Sorry, I butchered that. In Japan on the Super Famicom, the SNES. But sold out, but sold outside of Jap Japan, a secret of mana. Japan. Japan. <laughs> Earlier this summer, a mana collection with Final Fantasy Adventure, Secret of Mana, and that word that I can't pronounce was released in japan for the nintendo switch now the second game in the series is headed to current playstation hardware and steam according to femitsu this is a full remake remake with full voice though square enix english language press release simple states that the games will have voice overs new musical arrangements and other new elements like upgraded gameplay it will also have local multiplayer on all platforms an original version of this article said that the game would only have online multiplayer but that is not the case we apologize for the error for the person that wrote that so it's going to have local co-op it's going to have some voiceovers the gameplay is going to be pretty much the same but it's yeah. going to be a little updated it won't be as uh, chunky if you if you will yeah if true. you will uh so i'm excited i never got to play secret of mana but i've heard tons and tons of stuff for it yep i've never played final fantasy either so you know it's yeah it's kind of <laughs> one of those and breath of the wild was the first zelda game that i ever played so i'm batting a thousand right now you, at it's least like, i played zelda as a kid um Weirdo. so i'm i'm excited for that it coming to the vita that is a good thing yeah keep the vita rolling yes keep the vita alive go buy one um, so I'm excited for that. Now, speaking of handhelds, Telltale's Batman Guardians of the Galaxy have been confirmed for Nintendo Switch. Telltale Games is bringing the first season of the two of their episodic adventures games to Nintendo Switch. Nintendo America has confirmed via Twitter that both Batman and Guardians of the Galaxy are heading to its console. Get ready to defend the galaxy or become the Dark Knight. When more Telltale game adventures arrive on the Nintendo Switch, the company said. The news follows Telltale's previous release of Minecraft Switch Edition this summer. The, there's no current word on how close we may be to seeing the two games on Switch, except more news will and release dates to follow in the coming months. Um, now, that's just season one of Batman. Season yeah. two is currently going on right now of Batman. It is freaking amazing, and we're soon to get episode two. Episode two is going to have Harley Quinn. Did you see her? I did. It looks really good. I still need to get into Batman because I haven't as of yet. You need to. It is so good. The story's a little different. Less buggy. Season two is less buggy. Season one, one is buggy as all get out, but yeah. season two they've revamped the engine. We talked about it a little bit last week we, or the week yeah. before. Uh, I'm loving it. The story is amazing. You know, Batman's been Batman a little bit longer in this season, and it's just so good. Troy Baker is an amazing as Batman. Speaking of Batman, mm -hmm. um, the Dark Knight. Can you pull up um, yep. Gotham's? God. Batman suit, like the TV show. Are there already to that point? I just want you to look how horrible the Is kid it this looks. This one? No, that's that looks like Val Kilmer. Okay. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of how it you've got literally two devices right in front of you that is capable of looking things up. Now, if you haven't played any of the Telltale games, you're missing out on some spectacular storytelling but the problem with 
Telltale has been, it's very predictable. The latest Batman season two, episode one, Enemy Within, was amazing. Like it was very hard to like see the twists and turns that was happening. So highly suggest it. It is great. And I'm vamping right here. I'm vamping, vamp, vamp, vamp. I, they, as this we watch, does not exist. I about to say they must have taken it down. Probably so. Because it's somewhere it, on the internet. It is, but it was so bad. Like, you know, usually I'm, I'm like, I'll give them a break and be like, oh, you know, it's a young, you know, Bruce. You know, it could, it could be okay. And I'm like, this looks like poo. Like it looked, it literally, he had like a rounded hat. Like if you took Batman mm. and um, Diggle. Yeah, so and, he had like Magneto's helmet, and had like a three-year-old kid come up with the costume design between the two of them. That's what you'd get. Hmm. It was bad. Doesn't sound good. You know what else people wish would go away? I'm sure Bethesda wished this would go away. Target may have just leaked the existence of Bethesda's Game of Thrones video game. Oh, Target. A NeoGaf user spotted a new listing at Target that appears to be. A mostly blank landing page except for one phrase. Bethesda, Game of Thrones. The page existing, exim, existing implies that a Game of Thrones video game announcement might be imminent. And on top of that, the studio handling the project will be Bethesda. Best known for the Fallout series, but also Elder Scrolls, which is, uh, is about as close to the concept of Game of Thrones as any other game Nature. on the market, which is focused on fantasy, swordplay, warring factions, and dragons. Um... I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the one that's not excited about this. I'm gonna tell you why. Tell me why. Bethesda is not a storytelling game company. Like they've got stories, you know, you got Wolfenstein, you got different stuff like that. <clears throat> They're more of is that it? <laughs> yep. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna go back to my thing. <laughs> I'll comment on that in just a All second. Right. Thank you, the thing that I have the problem with Bethesda making this, yes, they made Skyrim. It feels like they'd be going back to it. It's like Guerrilla Games making another freaking Kill Zone game. Yeah. Okay. The people that need to make this are the people that are good with storytelling. Okay. And it's not Bethesda. It's Naughty Dog. Naughty, Naughty Dog, Dog needs to be making the Game of Thrones game. That would not be Bethesda. really good. That would be awesome. The reason why is if you look at Skyrim, the thing that you invest the most time in is just walking around the world. You look at Game of Thrones. You look at Game of Thrones, the the show or the books. It's about story driven elements. It's not about the world. The world is there, but it's not about exploring yeah. the world. It's the story. And I think if you had Naughty Dog making that game or someone of that caliber, which there's nobody of that caliber, I'm sorry if you're out there, game developers. But Naughty Dog is the master of story at the moment. It is so. It would be it. It would be what it is. It would be you know Skyrim with a code of Game of Thrones on it, and oh God, yeah. and I I doubt that Bethesda would put more work in it than they have to, yeah, and, I, because they've released Skyrim about five times so far. Yep. <laughs> hey, uh, my name's not Todd Howard, and wearing mustache, you can now play Skyrim on your phone. You should buy Skyrim. <laughs> what was our Skyrim? What was our thing about Todd Howard? Oh, you, uh, you, I was. Uh, Going out on stage and like consuming the souls of like that. Todd Howard comes out on stage. <laughs> Todd Howard. So I, I don't think it would be a good thing in my opinion. Uh, let me know in the comments below. We're going to be wrapping up this in just a second, and we'll we'll talk about something. But then we'll get to everybody's comments on this. What do you think? My hope for this game. No hopes. It's 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 it, it's low. Like I mean. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it's a good game. I hope it's some like I would be okay if it was something similar to uh, Skyrim or Fallout or would you know whichever one of those. It's pretty much the same thing, different skin. Yeah. Um. But have like maybe this is the time when they can you know stretch their storytelling legs and uh, and you know see what happens. I mm -hmm. doubt it. I like you said. I think it's just going to be a different coat of paint on on the Skyrim world and throw in a wall. Because it already has dragons, so you might as well just throw in a big ice wall, and then you get the new Game of Thrones game. I, you're not wrong. Because I mean, that's the thing with Bethesda. Like, I love Bethesda games. I do know, too. Fallout and Skyrim, they're great games. But as someone who's played both Fallout and Skyrim, you know, 
take away most of the story stuff, they're the same game with different skins. Yeah. It's exploratory. It's it's like except for vats. You got the okay, vats. that's that's true. <laughs> oh, because they can't come up with a shooting mechanic that actually works. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I said it. I no, said no, it. No, no, you were absolutely right. Uh, <laughs> you the first time I ever played Fallout, it was at my friend's house, and uh, she was like, "Okay, you want to use that?" So I was like, "No, no, no!" Like I'm, I'm pretty good at shooting games. And then I was playing. I was like, "How do you do that? Because this is not, this is not a shooting game." No, it's not, and it's ridiculous. And uh, I'm that's a, a soapbox all in, but, <laughs> in and of but itself. For for but that's like there's two different like game things, especially comparing Naughty Dog and Bethesda. There's like there's a story that drives a world and then a world that drives a story mm -hmm. and naughty dog is very story that drives a world like there's the world but the story is what you play it for yeah whereas uh uh bethesda they have incredible worlds with some story that you can go you know it, the the world that explains why there's stuff going on for the story so yeah, for Ga for Game of Thrones, like you said, it's very story oriented, and if you do want world aspects, that's that's cool, that's great. But yeah, that would definitely be more of a Naughty Dog thing than Bethesda. Yeah, I agree one more. Unless Bethesda just blows it out of the water, but let's be real, we know Bethesda they're not going to. <laughs> now, that, that. I wish this was set up. Because... You can you can pull it up. But the thing had another picture on it. Oh, doesn't. I don't know. I don't want to try it and then mess it up. Okay. Like I said, he's basically in a leather suit. He looks like a he looks like Ilian Payne, uh, the executioner on Game of Thrones. Yeah. That's what he looks like an executioner. It's ridiculous. Basically, like it, for those who can't see, yeah, I'm sorry. It's like it's a leather padded jacket, something you would see maybe like an older like motorcycle wearing thing, and then imagine the Batman mask but without the bat ears. I mean, that's what it is. Like, it says it's the proto Batman suit. I'm like, yeah, but that's like, it lo like the mask literally lo looks like he went to like, you know, a Halloween city it, or a Halloween I was store. Thinking more of a different kind of store than <laughs> no, we no, 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 no. The mask. The mask. <laughs> like, talking about he's a dominatrix. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like the mask, like I mean, the front of it looks like I I've done something similar. You go, you buy the mask, and then you just. Add stuff onto it. I did that with a Batman cosplay that I made, and like it's, that's what it looks like. It just it doesn't like even as like a TV show thing. It looks very cheap. Like yeah, I, if they're I, trying to do the whole oh he's like a kid, but also he's a really like wealthy kid. I'm not saying he could he could, like, he has he so could much buy money. Something. You can buy something way better than it that. Just, well, I'm sure scary. that Gotham does not have that much money no. in their budget to actually make anything other than that looks like a pantyhose <laughs> that they cut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like you can tell, like, it's, it's hard to see since you're further away in a smaller picture. Like, it's not like a hard plastic, it but looks it like looks crap. really cheap and sad. Yeah. Like, there are cosplayers who could make something that looks better than that for way cheaper than what I'm sure that the show spent on that. Yeah, it's when sad. I came across that, I was like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, But it's, it's the proto suit, so don't get that. That's okay. okay. Mm. So there you go, guys. There is our discussion for the week on all the news that you need to know. If you enjoyed that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you want gaming content, you can go over to Nerd Cave Gaming right there. If you want to support us, you can check out Patreon right there. If you want more videos, check them out right here. Go ahead. Pick one of them. I wonder which one you're going to do. You're going to be cool. You pick any of them. All four of them. You'd be awesome.